Okay, guys, about to go into surgery on this box here. Uh, board today, host group and phase clan. So, host group hit me up. Uh, backstory on that I did a board for one of their relatives that I didn't know was a relative. It just was a random thought that we had. Uh, Dalai Lama, ice cream, and waffles in downtown LA. Did a board for them, finished it. Um, after meeting the owner of that, we wound up doing like 10 boards for his nieces and nephews for Hanukkah and uh, one of the boards was for the host group and now we are here. So kept it real clean. Super simple face clan logo with the host logo. Um, imperfections as always, it's not supposed to be perfect, but from far away. Looks printed, but it's actually painted. Check it out. See the paint texture, white, black, super clean. Don't need to get crazy with it here. Simple. Can ride it too. Cool. All right, so to get this done, we're going to need a few pieces. Epoxy that I use for the finishes is Pro Marine. So there's a part A and part B. Uh, each epoxy you use tends to change in viscosity. The one I use is a little bit thicker when mixed, so it gives it a little bit more time to cure. And it doesn't, If um, for some artists, if you use pen or anything like that, the more runny the epoxy, how liquidy it is after mixed, like it has a tendency to pull marker out of your actual art piece. So if you're pouring epoxy on it and it's a little bit more runny and you use pens to finish, it's gonna rip all of that out. And if it's black on white, you're gonna have to go sand, do paint, it, it fucks everything up. So um, best bet, Pro Marine on everything. I've used a lot of different epoxies over here at the shop and this one never fails. So part A, part B, it's a one to one ratio, ounce to ounce. So one ounce to one ounce. Uh, for skateboards, I found that it's better to over pour because you want it to fully cover because sometimes there's imperfections in the paint and it, it causes it to lift higher or lift lower. So for like a perfect pour, you always want to over pour the epoxy. So I usually do about 12 ounces combined. So six ounces of A, six ounces of B. Um, need mixing cup, measurements. So you can make sure that's bought on because if you have a little bit too much part A and not enough part B, your project will never dry and it's going to be left tacky and it's you're gonna have to throw it away. I've done that a couple times on some big projects. Um, other than that, mixing cup, mixing a stick, the blowtorch, people's favorite part for some reason, the pyros, and for this project, a little bit of glitter. You can throw that in. Just pops it out. Uh, I like to use the glitter, especially on projects like this, where it's super clean, but you just want to add a little bit on top. So let's get to this. Oh, really? All right, we're right at the six ounce mark with part A. Now let's go to B. Throw some glitter in here before we start mixing. Go like that, yes. Ah, fuck it. Let's see what happens. There really isn't a gauge for the glitter unless you're doing bigger projects, but pretty much what you're gonna do here is just mix until everything's, you wanna get the sides, bottom, um, it all, you'll, you'll kind of start to see the difference. Hold on. It all look like one kind of like murkyish color. Uh, depending on the weather outside, sometimes it'll get more bubbly. 
Um, sometimes it'll be a little bit more stuck, but mix this for about two to three minutes like this. Getting all the sides, the bottom is getting all turned around. All right. so you check this final run, you'll see kind of like now where we're at here. Yeah, it kind of runs smooth, but it's it's liquidy enough. I think we're good to go. Because the epoxy is super sticky and a, a pain in the ass to clean up, you always want to make sure that you have like a drip proof system. There's no such thing really, but uh, I use one of these bins with um, some wood risers. So it makes sure that because when it cures for 24 hours, it could get stuck. And when you pull it off, it could possibly fuck up the whole, the whole finish. So um, this is how I usually set it up, and it's pretty much perfect. Um, it's not built for mass production, but from a you know one-off board standpoint, this is as productive as you can get it for small small batch stuff. So even here, you won't even it's not going to stick to this wood. But if you see, there's a gap, so it won't stick to the plastic. Get it started. All right, so I usually like to go start in the middle, just pile up, and then I'll start. You'll start seeing it just tend to roll off the sides from the concave, and then uh, you always want to just kind of get some motion to it so that already kind of the more natural momentum that comes off this, the better it's going to just sit. Um, leave some in there. So when you start working around with this. Kind of make sure it's all even when you start spreading. Cover as much space. Oh, I have some left. I went over pour on this, went 12 ounces instead of 10, but okay. It let it drip through. Once you have the whole surface, the uh, surface covered, kind of just take your, make sure you swipe the edges. And you'll see, you'll know if it's not covered because you'll see little dry spots like this. Sometimes it just, that's why you want to save some extra so you can tap over. Make sure you have a clean one because it really does make a difference. Because when you're pulling this out after 24 hours and you had to wait all that time and you miss shit, it fucking sucks. Can't get time back, so you gotta make sure it goes. Thanks, Gio, for filming. I know you got some shit to do yourself. No, it's no worries. <laughs> you're good, man. This shit's relaxing, bro, honestly. This is like one of the most therapeutic things ever. People are going to like counseling and shit. I'm going over here, fuck. I think- Right here, this is the best part. What you're doing here is a new trend. I think it's gonna, it's gonna be the next thing for- Ooh, that was a good one. Someone that's actually dedicated to protect their, their art. This shit's skatable too. Um, obviously this is going to be like a two part thing. I, I'm not going to sit here for 24 hours and let it dry, but, um, you kind of get the gist. So now pretty much once you get the whole surface covered, you're going to want to pull some of these air bubbles out. I don't know if you can see it. If you hit up close, um, you'll notice some of that. You hit the torch. Yeah. The torch, uh, it's gotta be a low, you want it on a low heat, but start off high and then kind of dumb it down a little bit just because you can like burn epoxy it'll uh see so yeah, all of them start disappearing let me get this shot over here so pretty much um when you're mixing part a to part b on a that one-to-one -one ratio as you're mixing and the chemicals are combining you're creating air pockets so if you don't apply heat to pull the air bubbles out, you, it'll show up in the actual finish when it's hardened and you'll see like little pockets everywhere. Um, it's almost impossible to avoid it entirely, but this will ensure that at least 95% of the board is pretty much 
you would never tell unless you've done this a lot and you're just being picky, too picky about your work. But if you can see here, what looks like to be air bubbles right now is just the little bits of glitter that I popped in here because this is just, you know, it's fine. So I think we're good. And you got to keep an eye out for the dry spots. Yeah. So pretty much yeah, best way to do that epoxy. is you kind of kind of just re-grab some yeah, of this you stuff. You can re-grab some or. You can pull it from it the up. bottom of the bucket or whatever you want to do, but yep, that's it. That's it. Uh, now you just let it sit for 24 hours. Um, if you're in an area that's popping off a lot of dust or anything that could like bugs too, I've had a situation where a little fly landed on a freaking board and it got stuck. Um, you just want to have it in the place where there's not a lot of dust flying around. So I'm gonna have to move this into the the office for the night and then uh, we'll come back for part two show you what you have to do to at least if you want to have it skatable or anything like that there's a couple other pieces of the process but if you're just looking for something to put on the wall you can you know finish this set it for 24 hours and you're good to go but other than that i'm out of here i'm gonna get some sleep later fam